Hello and welcome to this tutorial for users of Microsoft Excel. In an earlier tutorial we looked at the IF function and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the nested IF function. Now I'll just remind you what an IF function is like. If I click into my status box here, or the status cell in G7, I'm going to create an IF function here that will simply tell me if the venue is sold out. And you can see the venue capacity is here, 170 and obviously I need to reference my tickets sold. So all I do is type equals if, open parentheses, and then the logical test is simply to check cell C7 in this case and find out if it's equal to the capacity. And because I'm going to copy this formula down, if I press F4 that sets that cell reference as absolute. Type a comma to separate the different parts of the function and if it's true then I'm going to simply say sold out between quotations because it's text, type a comma again and if it's not sold out then obviously we have tickets available. As you can see, if we can type it correctly, there we go. So close the parentheses to finish and that's all a basic if function does. Press the enter key, we get the message tickets available. If I go back to cell C7 again and if it does happen to sell out we reach our capacity of 170 the status message changes to read sold out. So a basic if function can deliver one of two outcomes, either a true outcome or a false outcome. Now what I'd like to have this function do is actually look at more than two possible outcomes. So I actually want to look at three possible outcomes that could be sold out. Tickets available if there are plenty of tickets available, but if it's almost sold out, I want a, another message that says last few tickets. And that's where a nested if function comes in. And basically a nested if function is two or more if functions combined into a single formula. I'm going to delete the if function I just created and we'll create our nested if function. Now the first part is just the same as a regular if function. So we type equals if, open parentheses, and we need to perform our logical test. Well, it's the same test. So click on the ticket sold cell, C7, and compare it to the capacity which is B4 and set that as absolute again because I'll be copying the formula down. Type a comma. Now if that's true I'm obviously going to put sold out as previously but if it's not true, in other words there are tickets available, I want to look at another comparison and that is another logical test so I need to create another if function. So I'm going to type if open parentheses and now I'm going to check if C7 is greater than 150. Type a comma again and so if that's true I want a message to appear saying last few tickets. If cell C7 shows neither sold out or above 150 I can now put a final message in there to say tickets available. Close the quotation. To complete this function I need to put two closed parentheses because I had an open parentheses to start my if function and also a second open parentheses my second if function, the nested if. And then I close it with two logically. Now you might be looking at that thinking well there are actually two true statements there. So 170 tickets sold is sold out but it's also greater than 150 so how does the function differentiate between those two true statements. The basic way that a nested if works is that Excel will take each logical test in order. So it will check the first one. If that's true the function ends so it will never go on and check the second or third or fourth logical test depending on how many nested if functions you have. So in this particular case the function stops because the value in C7 is 170 at the first logical test, sold out. I hope that makes sense. It often makes more sense when you put these things into practice. So what I'm going to do is press the Enter key. I will see if our function works. So at the moment it's saying sold out because obviously I've got 170 tickets sold. But let's say we have a cancellation and somebody returns 15 tickets. So we have 155 sold then the status changes to show last few tickets. So the 170 test isn't true, but the greater than 150 is true. So we get the last few tickets message. Let's say we have another cancellation 
and our sales go down to 125. So we do have three possible outcomes with that nested if function. I'm going to recreate that nested if function to show you one of the things you need to watch out for when creating these types of functions. And that is the order that you perform your logical test in. And here I'll type equals if as usual. And this time my logical test will be to see if the ticket sales are above 150. So let's check in this case C8. And let's see if that's greater than 150. And if that's true, we know we're going to say last few seats. Close the quotation, type a comma. And the next thing I want to do is see if it's sold out. So if I type if again, open parentheses, and then check C8 against cell B4, the capacity. Make that absolute again. Type a comma. And if that's true, we're going to say sold out. And if that's not true, the last thing we want to do is say tickets available. There we go. Double closed bracket or double closed parentheses because I've got two open parentheses. Press the enter key. Now at the moment it says tickets available because it's 125, which is good. Let's go to 160 and we get last few seats and let's sell out. And there's the problem. It still says last few seats. So the function doesn't work. And the question is, why is that not working? And it's basically, as I previously explained, that the function will stop when it finds something that's true. And so if you look at the order that I've done my logical tests is I've tested for greater than 150 first. So anything above 150 will always return the last few seats. It will never really get to check this sold out value because obviously it's greater than 150, so it'll never get here. So when you're checking, certainly against a numerical test, always check high to low. If you're checking against text, that doesn't make any difference. You can put it in any order you want. A text will either match or it won't match. So it's a, a much easier test to make. So I'm going to delete the wrong if function or the wrong nested if function and copy down the correct one. And as you see, I'm going to copy that down. It'll all work. So if we take my Wizard of Oz and maybe take that to 160, I get the last few tickets. And let's say Singing in the Rain is sold out as well. It goes to 170 and we get the sold out message. So it's all working. For this final demonstration of using nested if functions, I'm going to have something a little bit more complicated and ask lots of different questions within my if function. So it'll give you an example of how many levels you can go down if you want to. I want to be able to work out my venue higher fee based on the number of tickets sold. And as you can see in this table, the more tickets I sell, the cheaper the venue gets because the venue will benefit from having more people be able to sell more drinks and food, etc. So they're happy to give me a discount based on the higher numbers of attendance. So we'll create the if function then, or the nested if function. So it's going to be equals if, open parentheses. And the first thing I need to do is see if my ticket sold is greater than 149. So if I type a comma, the true price is going to be 295. And I'm simply going to click on the cell and set that as an absolute because I'll be copying the formula down later. Type a comma. If that's not true, we're going to check the next value. So type if, click on C7, and see if that is greater than 99. And if it is, I will get the $325 price. Make that an absolute reference again. Type a comma, check again for the next level. So is C7 greater than 74? And if that's true, I will get the venue for $375. And if that's not true, I need to check again. So if, oops, I've got to make C19 an absolute reference. I'll go back and just edit that. So just select, press F4, and I can just jump back and go and check C7 again and find out if C7 is greater than 49 this time. And if it is, type a comma, I get the $425 price, get an absolute reference, type a comma, and if none of those logical tests are true, the last remaining price is $500, which is the full price for the venue. So to work out how many closed parentheses, I simply count up how many ifs I have. And I've got one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four closed brackets or parentheses. Press the enter key. And at the moment, we get $325 for our venue. 
So let's see if we sell 155 tickets, then that goes down to 295. And if we're not performing very well and we've only managed to sell 35, we have to pay the full price and so on. So hopefully you can see there the power of using a nested if function as opposed to a standard if function. It just gives you many more possible outcomes. And in Excel 2010, you can have pretty much as many nested if functions as you want, but looking at this particular one, you can see it begins to get a little complicated and you might want to think about applying other solutions to the problem. And again, that's something we'll come back to in future lessons. But just for now, I'm going to complete this table, copy that function down, and we will see, based on our ticket sales, the different venue higher fees we will be paying. I hope you've found some of the things you've seen in this lesson useful and you'll be able to apply nested if functions to the spreadsheets that you're creating. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.